I think the biggest question that we could actually see is, will Ethereum maintain its dominance? If Ethereum maintains its dominance, the higher Ethereum goes, the other smart contract related blockchains will also follow. And if it goes to where Ethereum is right now, so there's still a room for around seven to eight times in terms of movement from its current price as well. Hey guys, so in this video, let's talk about Solana. I want to give you a basic overview on what makes Solana very, very interesting because truth be told, if you have been following me also since the start of the year, my primary focus on a lot of those smart contract related blockchains where Ethereum was the highest in terms of pecking order, then I started to place a lot of attention on the Binance Smart Chain followed by Polkadot and Cardano as well. Before we continue with this video, allow me to share my experience with Canon Maxify, which was a very, very good and amazing experience for me as I have been using printers for years, but by far and large, this is one of the best printers that I have ever tried. First of which, it was so easy to set up, just looking at how it was built, how sturdy it felt, and how easy it is for someone to be able to go from the box and to be able to do it by myself. That being said, I appreciated how easy it was to be able to fill up the ink. It was so easy, it was so convenient, and the inks that were given were massively a lot. After plugging everything, putting all the ink, I tried to set up and do the test print. It was such a breeze. What I appreciated about this is that it had a QR code function that allowed me to easily set up my phone and print directly and without going through so much just to be able to print as well. So you can connect this via Wi-Fi or directly straight to the printer itself. So if you want to know more about it, visit the Canon authorized stores near you. Follow the Canon online stores as well in Lazada and Shopee and join Canon's Viber community for exclusive promos and offers. I'll put the links in the description below for you guys to check it out. Now back to the video. And somehow, some way, no, Solana, which started less than two years ago, came from about $1 per coin last April 2019 to around 240 plus US dollars per one sol. And by the time of this video, it's currently the fifth largest cryptocurrency with around 69 billion in terms of market cap as well. By the time of this recording, Ethereum is around 554 billion US dollars, while the Binance Smart Chain is around 103 billion US dollars. And with that premise, if it tries to attack the market cap of Ethereum, we have around seven to eight times still movement for it to go to where Ethereum is today. In my opinion, Ethereum is still in terms of the pecking order. It has the largest number of developers. A lot of the artists are there. A lot of the NFT projects are there. It boasts of a very, very large ecosystem and it has its first mover advantage. We have a lot of smart contract blockchains that have taken the scene because they're trying to address a lot of the issues that Ethereum has. I've been saying this over and over, the biggest problem of Ethereum right now is it's not as scalable until we're actually waiting for it to migrate from proof of work to proof of stake, which will address those scalability issues. What Solana brings into the table is it can do a lot of the things that Ethereum can do, but at a much faster way and at a much cheaper way as well. When you try to go that route and you try to go faster and cheaper, you sacrifice decentralization and that's why right now december 2021 bitcoin is still the most decentralized of all of the blockchains out there and the more decentralized you are you sacrifice speed in the process so let's talk about speed side by side solana ethereum and cardano as i mentioned earlier the biggest problem with ethereum is it's not as fast because ethereum can only process about 15 to 30 transactions per second and Cardano, which was pegged to be a blockchain that could surpass ETH, could do around 250 transactions per second. But what's interesting is Solana blows everyone out of the park as Solana can do around 50,000 to 65,000 transactions per second. Just to add context to that, Visa can process around 24,000 transactions per second in terms of transactional speed. That's what makes Solana very, very interesting because it could process more at a very, very fast rate. However, the biggest advantage of Ethereum is that we have seen it live for quite some time 
with a large amount of load. Having the capacity to hit 50,000 to 65,000 transactions is amazing, but we still need more data and evidence later on when the system or the blockchain has a larger amount of transactions already. Because it's just like saying that this car can take this much weight until we actually see it carry that much weight. That's when we'll actually also see in real life how big of an effect that load is for that particular car. But just looking at the sheer speed of Solana alone, I think that's what's creating a buzz for a lot of people to enter Solana because it could do a lot of things that Ethereum can do, but at a faster way. One of the biggest issues, as what I've mentioned earlier for Ethereum, is its cost. Since it's still doing proof of work, you have miners who are validating the transactions, which makes it very, very expensive. And for those who are into the NFT space, for those who have done transactions uh, via decentralized exchanges, you know how expensive those gas fees are. And for Ethereum, it could go though, from a range of as low as $4 to as high as $20 per transaction, which could significantly make sending money or making transactions that are smaller very, very impractical. And for a lot of people who are coming in from fiat and transacting in Ethereum, regardless if it's buying NFTs or just doing some transactions on chain, that becomes a very, very expensive proposition. Solana's transaction fee is about 0.000014 four zeros to about 0.00025 cents. That low. So imagine the amount of savings that people can get just by doing the same transactions but doing it in Solana instead of Ethereum. One of the reasons why I like cryptocurrencies is the ability to be able to send assets borderless at lightning fast speeds. I've noticed a lot of people have been staying away from sending USDT, USDC via Ethereum because of the costs that are attached to it. For those that want to save, they've been going other alternative routes as well. And looking at it from Solana, its proposition that it's cheaper and faster is something that's very, very interesting. It's just that though, every time you do that, you sacrifice security and decentralization, which is one of the biggest proponents of cryptocurrencies. Somewhere around August, September, October, we've seen Solana move up from below 100 US dollars to see it rise into prominence from 100 going to 200 then dropping a bit going to 140 to where it is right now. As the market continued to push up, so did Solana. And one of the reasons behind the current push was NFTs. And as you all know, NFTs have taken the market by storm, particularly Ethereum. But there are developers, there are investors, there are artists, there are collectors that are trying to look for a cheaper route as well. And there are people who have been banking on Solana as an ecosystem to allow them to do the things that they originally wanted to do in Ethereum, but at a cheaper and faster way. If you're asking for what's the proposition for Solana aside from its speed and aside from it being cheap, a ton of NFT projects that are being built there. And I just, I even made a video about it interviewing the co-founder of Genopets. It's another blockchain slash NFT game that's being built off Solana. Anyways, what makes Ethereum interesting is its network effects and the amount of applications and developments that are being built in its platform. For Solana, there are some key projects that we could actually see as well. One very, very interesting project, in my opinion, is Audius, which is a decentralized blockchain streaming service that's running off of Solana. It's already getting millions of users. So think about a decentralized Spotify, which is running on Solana, which is right in the forefront of all of this. As you all know, I've talked a lot about DeFi, also made videos on it. And a lot of the DeFi videos that I've made were primarily in Ethereum and the Binance Smart Chain. Solana has its own equivalent, which is called Solend. Think about Aave, but in Solana. Solend allows people to lend their tokens and get yield towards it. One of the things that makes it so interesting and allows it to transact faster is its consensus mechanism. For Bitcoin, Ethereum, it's proof of work. For Cardano, it's proof of stake. For Solana, it uses proof of history. So what proof of history does is it creates timestamps 
in the blockchain that could be reference for validation. It just looks at a specific timestamp as a proof that the transaction really occurred. For you to be able to visualize what I'm trying to say is try to imagine going in a vacation that you are in London and you took a selfie from your phone that you were in the Tower of London in December 31. 2020 at exactly 10 p.m. Because you have a picture, that's enough proof for yourself to know where were you exactly. And that's what proof of history does. It looks at a snapshot, it looks at a picture, which serves as its proof already that that particular transaction actually happened. That's why it's faster. Because you're just looking already at a picture, at a snapshot, as compared to going through the entire database for you to be able to confirm if the transaction actually happened. So in terms of tokenomics, by the time I'm making this video, there's about 305 million Solana coins that are in circulation. And Solana has limited annual issuance, which is given as a reward to those supporting the cryptocurrency. In terms of its supply, it's, it grew by 8% initially, but that will decline by 15% annually per year until it ultimately reaches 1.5% annually, which will be its fixed ongoing issue ones moving forward. So 1.5%, which is when you compare it to inflation in different economies, somehow relatively low. I want you to focus on two things also that are very important. The total value locked in Solana and the number of wallets that are active and that are being opened. And what's interesting about that is that it's growing at a very, very fast rate. However, I just want to note is that everything in the cryptocurrency space, especially if the project has merit, is going at a very, very fast rate. A lot of these L1 uh, blockchains that are very significant, it doesn't matter if it's Ethereum or Avalanche or Polkadot, that because they have so much merit, I really believe that adoption will just continually make these blockchains continue to grow and move. That's why this whole space, because it's so interesting, will still grow through the years. And I really believe Solana will be a very, very big part of it. The fact that it's now the fifth largest cryptocurrency speaks volumes of the amount of trust, the amount of participation there is to it. And if you're looking for and trying to analyze how much legs does this have to continually move up? Maybe you can base it on how Ethereum was actually moving. And maybe you can also base it also in terms of where Bitcoin will go. Because where Bitcoin will go, the entire market follows. I think the biggest question that we could actually see is, will Ethereum maintain its dominance? If Ethereum maintains its dominance, the higher Ethereum goes, the other smart contract related blockchains will also follow. And if it goes to where Ethereum is right now. So there's still a room for around seven to eight times in terms of movement from its current price as well. What's very, very important above and beyond selecting uh, your favorite token and coins is building a base on what you like the most and adding certain tokens and coins to that base of yours already. So it could be your base is Bitcoin and Ethereum and you're adding Solana to the mix or your base is Solana and adding other tokens. It's more of preference. It's more of the amount of risks that you're willing to take. Because at the end of the day, the trade-off will be this. Bitcoin and Ethereum are the relatively safer ones, larger ones also. But the biggest trade-off of that is the larger the market cap, the upside also becomes relatively smaller. And the ones that are relatively smaller will also give you a bigger shot of a larger upside as well. That's why I'm going through all of this layer one smart contract blockchains. And I'm going to make a series out of this as well to be able to uh, give you as much value attached to it. So after this, I'm going to try to analyze Avalanche as well. Or if you guys have other questions, feel free to put it in the comment section below and I'll try to uh, make videos on top of that. So there, if you want to know more about cryptocurrencies, check out all of the links in the description below. If you want to invest in cryptocurrencies and try it out, check out Binance. They're one of the largest crypto exchange in the world with a vast selection of tokens and coins that will allow you to be able to trade interchangeably. And for those who want to learn how to trade technical analysis or at least uh, learn the rudiments of it, I have books written about it, that particular topic, and I have an on-demand Zoom recorded course that's also available for you to be able to watch for a month. So they're all in the description below. If you guys have questions, feel free to put it down and I'll try my best to be able to answer you and to help you in this journey. And what's amazing about this is I've been making videos about cryptos already for about a year and 
it's so nice eh, that we get to learn together. And in my opinion, I, I have been learning via practitionership and doing it, investing in it. And that's what I suggest also to all of you. Don't just take whatever you hear and see in YouTube. Do your own due diligence, study, take the time to learn, then start to double down and execute. Because at the end of the day, execution will give you the largest amount of learnings as well. What do you guys think? Do you like Solana? I want to hear your thoughts. Put them down below. This is Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon and God bless you all.